not gonna lie, I sort of wish the Toto Yuji beatdown episode was a whole arc. <laughs> like, I wish it lasted forever. Zero HP. Dead. Was it though? <laughs> Oh, we got all all six of them. And death painting wombs, because why not? This painful flashback. So it's a beacon of sorts. Turned out that it was all a distraction, in a sense. Ooh, pretty clever. Yeah, they really pulled off a lot of objectives with one mission, and Hanami was sort of the, the fall guy, fall tree. He's sort of just been chilling. Yes, he is the only thing he's been interested in so far. Halloween. Yeah, it's really cool how that whole mission seemed like a loss at first, but turns out it was a huge gain. <laughs> the insider? I ever wanted not miss Jogo in that arc. One HP. I love it when shows do this. I love it when... I think I was talking about it last episode, actually. Shows give you what you want. You know, you want the coolest possible outcome. This is a really random comparison, but I thought of this when I was first playing the, the game Devil May Cry 3. Because the enemies are so hard, but also Dante is just so cool. You get the best of everything, and that makes the, the tension and the action way, way more meaningful and cooler. You kind of want things to be as difficult as they can, while having the greatest ability to overcome those challenges. More satisfying than having the villains be weak is the villains being as strong and intense intelligent as they could be and having to have the heroes overcome that. Just like in life, you know, you want to have the, the biggest challenge that you can overcome. It doesn't feel good to overcome things that don't feel like real challenges, but at the same time, you don't want to be taking on things that are too much for you that wipe you out. You want to hit that optimal point where you are really maximized and the things you accomplish feel like real accomplishments. In relation to the show, like other shows I've watched before this, I feel like it does a great job having both the heroes and the villains be really capable, really intelligent, really powerful, really great. For both of them, that whole arc was a win. In, in certain key senses. Like, the villains are not stupid. They didn't just throw that. I mean, Hanami took a real ass-kicking for the audience's benefit, but they achieved their objective towards a larger goal. At the same time, how much greater is Yuji for the Toto connection? How much did we, as the audience, benefit from that display of force from Gojo? You know what I mean? That's the space that I think makes this kind of conflict and the action that comes with it really great. I feel like My Hero Academia, especially in later seasons, does a really great job of that. Like, you even get a whole arc with the villains, knowing that they're coming, but knowing that the kids are great. The UA kids are also amazing and not quite ready, but also capable. It makes it really exciting. It was pointed out to me in, the, in this shot. Yeah, the rain's not hitting him. It's so cool. Oh, so we actually had deaths off screen. Yeah, I sense the lie coming. Yeah, relevant answers. It's going to be about coat racks and other such household objects. <laughs> there it is. Huh. This is maybe a wake-up call. Maybe that's what it is. We were having so much fun. <laughs> yeah. Tradition is tradition. It's good for the kids. The UA students kept going, didn't they? We became buddies. We became brothers. I had taken a lot of blows to the head. Like a lot of blows. Toto blows to the head. It's an understatement. Interesting. Really interesting. I love that these characters are like actively, openly exploring this. 
答えなんかない。すぐに追い越す。Love the energy, as always. I think rather than there being no answer, it's just they don't know yet, and they probably each contain something that the other needs in that regard. I think I used to believe I could think myself to whatever I needed. If I was only looking close enough, thought hard enough, I could arrive at the answers I needed for myself and sort of shape myself or mold myself through thought. But in hindsight, I think there's a bit of an arrogance to that because the world is so much bigger than me, and I just don't have enough data, and you know, I'll never have enough data. To get any kind of conclusive answers. But what's sort of great is that the world kind of has them in itself. You know, things are just what they are. So I think one way forward is to do exactly what the kids are doing. You know, they have a working model, sort of, they have a working strategy, a working outlook, but they're not. Stuck in it. You know, it's not like a thing they're doing because they need it to be that way. They they have a commitment to something higher, which is understanding and living up to what is sort of a self imposed desire, direction to be better, perhaps to do good or be significant in their own view. And so they move forward, and the information that they need is in their experiences and, and in each other. And so without them having any guarantee that it'll happen, they're going to get to a place they never could have gotten on their own. Just by virtue of like taking a step out into the world, like a huge step out into the world in a way that demands things of themselves, in a way that does not allow them to kind of stay stuck in their, their ways. Sometimes I wonder if there are certain key things that you can do to ensure that you can't get it wrong, you know, or that you'll get it right eventually. And if I had to take a stab at what some of those things are, it would be things like striving for perfect honesty. And I don't even mean with other people, although the degree to which one is able to be honest with other people probably will reveal what's actually important, which is the ability to be honest with oneself. Another would be the ability to withstand discomfort. And pain because a lot of times that's what beliefs function as. It's just a way to keep us feeling secure. To discard a model that isn't working or has clearly been shown to have flaws is like a crustacean shedding its shell for a bigger one. You know, there's a point where you're, you're soft and you can just be picked off, you're vulnerable, and that's uncomfortable. The more you can be comfortable with that, State and realize that it's not actually dangerous to be vulnerable intellectually. The more you can sort of put down the things that have kept you safe up to this point and be grateful for them and still seek things that are maybe more accurate, more nuanced, less selfish. And I've gotten the distinct sense from the characters, especially these two, the two boys, that that's kind of the path they're on. They just can't necessarily see it yet. <laughs> hey, look who it is. Pain a visit. <laughs> <laughs> He, he's kind of intense, right? No, just don't fight it. Don't fight it. Be a vulnerable crustacean. Live the fantasy. Does this mean fighting every day, though? Useless Miwa. Okay. <laughs> Tell me more about this philosophy. Yeah, she was kind of asleep and swordless. <laughs> Poor Miwa. So this is baseball, I was wondering, based on the intro. Of course you are. Would it even be a tournament arc without baseball? <laughs> Samurai Shampoo vibes. We don't need a flashback, we don't need a baseball flashback, we just need baseball. Whatever Toto says, Toto gets. Also, I just really want to play baseball. Morning is boring. That's what I'm saying. Yes, exactly. I love you, Toto. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm saying. Open yourself up. Right? I feel like we've all made that realization at one point. That's also true, though. Embrace the infinite. That's fun. I feel like he could arrange anything in the box he wanted. Did he deliberately get it so that it was baseball? The what? That what is the stat? This opens up some interesting doors. I saw something about a mango. The mango she was letting ripen in the refrigerator is gone. Why do people keep eating me with food? She's a swordsman, right? So. Whoops. <laughs> Baseball experience two L two losses. Practicing cursive can write his own name now. That's fantastic. I poop a lot next day. That's way too much information. That's not the time. Can you just play ball? <laughs> it was a big day for him. Episode 1. He was sort of listless and drifting. And make sure you tell everyone you meet about your bloodline. That'll really ingratiate you with them. When you're playing baseball but you can't swing because 
of a mom flashback. I'm being hard on him as a joke, but there's something interesting and intriguing and I guess nice about the fact that he even took the time to ask Yuji why he became a Jujutsu sorcerer. I'm not really quite sure how to read that, but it's definitely a humanizing moment, just communicating as people in the same field, no pun intended. It shows interest in him as a person and maybe even a request for a connection. And then the parallel with them being lonely, I guess. I mean, they both don't have families, right? Also sort of bizarre from the mother, <laughs> like you can have a relationship with me when you're successful, I guess. Awaiting credit card approval. That's dangerous for her. Oh no. It's not fair. Oh, we got a baseball brawl. Baseball brawl. But it's technically one of us. Yeah. You used to hate mangoes. Oh, did she eat her mango? She did, didn't she? She's the food thief. We've established that. Um, what? Something about chicken breast. Prefers breast meat and chicken nanban and thigh meat in oyakodon. I'm definitely a breast meat guy, in general. Oof. Once and once a zebra someday! <laughs> that is a- that is a goal. That is a life goal that we could have. I actually petted a zebra. I think I have video footage of it. It was in China. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to overstate this, but it was one of the greatest moments of my life. That actually was one of the starts of YouTube. It was before I even made public videos. I was making little travel vlogs for my friends and family. But why would you want to punch it, though? What did zebras ever do to him? Oof, we will not get along. Protein powder is delicious. She's gonna be an ace. Well done. Wait, wait for it. Oh, that's not fair. She caught the snitch. Oh, I see. All right, they don't have that many people. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fact. It's just fact that they, they had a life. You know, they went to middle school together. It was not a fantasy. Look, so far, everything that Toto says has been real. Like his galaxy brain IQ. I think we learned something from that. You know, just don't doubt what he says. If Toto Aoi says that you won the middle school nationals with him, you won the middle school nationals with him, and that's all there is to it. Don't fight it. Just bask in the glory of your middle school nationals. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. That's what I'm uncalled for. He was just living, living his passion, living his love. He didn't deserve to get hit in the face for it. But man, relationship with Toto is, is a real contract, huh? It's like bonding for life. You have all these obligations now. I want to cry, I'm not gonna lie. Heathens, all of them. And ants. Intro, intro ants, they were there, they eat cornbread. Alright, I've been hard on this character, Kaku Genji. And it's been pointed out to me, rightly so, that it's not like Gojo wasn't planning on killing Itadori himself. It's just like a later killing. So nobody's really innocent in this, except for Yuji. Although Yuji ate the finger. And I can't even really say what he just said is wrong. You know, as a, as a person who's responsible for not just kids, but like the world as he sees it. If he doesn't feel capable of dealing with it, and he feels like he could get out of control, I understand the reasoning. But I personally feel like it's unsatisfying. And I really can only take that as far as my, my own opinion. Like, it's easy for me to make that judgment call sitting in safety from behind a computer screen. But I think in an exploration of ideals, you want to win at the highest level. And I think what that would be is trying to solve a problem without sacrificing Yuji's humanity. But to be fully open and fair, that doesn't make Gaku Ganji the worst. Plus he can shred the guitar which is awesome. It's just not the best, which is, you know, forgivable. Gojo at least has a relationship with Yuji for what that's worth. I feel like it's not nothing. Gakuganji kind of made that call without looking Yuji in the eye in a proverbial and literal sense. I still find it disturbing though that the kids reacted so cavalierly to that. Even if they were to go through with it, I feel like there should have been a little bit of something, you know, a little bit of fear, regret, distaste. I wonder where Nanami falls in this. <laughs> Right. Right. It's a terrible job. This feels so much better to me. Like, I don't know. It's not great, it's not a solution. It's easy to say that, but at the same time, it's hard to say that. There's something like neutral Jing in there, you know, which maybe is what's called for. Because Itadori, he's not just Sukuna's curse. He's Yuji Itadori. He's got so much potential and is a genuinely great kid in many ways. So it is complicated.
Oh, speaking of food tastes, this one right up my alley. I feel like there's not a lot of snack foods, especially breakfast foods, that aren't made better by just a dash of like habanero or something. Making life a little bit more spicy, you know what I mean? Ooh. It's a, a great conversation. At least it shows that they're conf conflicted. I feel like we need a FLCL style voiceover right here. Nothing special ever happens here. <laughs> Tokyo won. Oh, whoops. Embrace the infinite and the nothing, ants. Oh, they didn't die. You know what you should do about Gojo and his greatness? Accept it. Juju Sampo. Bryce. Yeah, protagonists can't choose. Solid question. Panda again lurking. <laughs> Why is no one saying panda? I don't know, I like it. <laughs> we could keep going with these questions. I feel like people like giving their opinion on stuff. I should have been doing this in the comments from the beginning. Just goes to show what a negligent YouTuber I am. <laughs> we can do catch up. Cats or dogs? <laughs> Rice or bread? Let me know. Also, what kind of girls do you like? <laughs> Just throw all the questions from the show in, into one comment section. What am I missing? What is the meaning of existence? Is it to allow people to have a good death? Or is it to protect people and make sure they have a life? Anyway, tough act to follow, the previous arc. But I think this episode did a great job being an epilogue of sorts. Showing that the villains are a lot more capable than they appeared during that arc. Also, some really key ideas and insights here about the characters. One, the two kids, Megumi and Yuji, being sort of on a parallel path in a sense that is shared. Also, I think the adults. It was important for me to see their conflict about Yuji. That was a great touch. This episode covers a lot of bases. That was totally accidental, I swear. In a way that doesn't feel rushed or forced, and I feel sets up a lot of really cool and important things, while also being fun and providing a bit of levity after the heaviness of the previous couple episodes.